Hey guys, my name is Moon and welcome back for more Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 3 Tatari Goroshi. So last time Keichi dealt with uh, Satoko's uncle's body, right? And then later on, the Viper, <laughs> the devil, she showed up, Takano san, and it seems that she knows as well, right? What Keichi did because of the shovel, I suppose, right? And Keichi in the rain there. And then I think she also did something with Tomitake. Because later on she said something to Keichi like. We didn't see each other boy. Something like that right. So she's also definitely hiding something. So let us continue. And see the aftermath. Of what Keichi did. At first I thought it was a dream. Damn, it's black now. I was staring at this strange sheet, not really understanding what it was. That was all. I didn't go after it, nor did I ridicule it. The fact was that the boring view was the ceiling of my own room, but I didn't realize that for fairly a long time. Yes, I thought I had been dreaming, but I actually been staring at the ceiling the whole time. Lethargy, lethargy induced by the voices of the cicadas. Even after I realized I was awake, I couldn't draw forth the energy to sit up. Everything I could see, everything I could hear, everything was like a television broadcast that had already ended. It was hot. So hot, I could choke on the heat. My back was moist with night sweats and it felt gross. Unable to endure it any longer, I tossed in my futon and finally blood started coursing through my brain. I lazily recalled the long day I had yesterday. The reality as I lay here listening to the voices of the cicadas and yesterday so different from it. In order to kill Satiko's uncle, I had rehearsed a formulated plan and dug a hole. It was very hot and I was tired, wasn't it? And when I even evening came, I went to school and called him out on the phone. I panicked for a moment when he asked where the police station was, but it worked out. And then I waited and swooped down. I couldn't remember anymore what sort of emotions I let, my, my, I let control my body. In any case, it didn't go smoothly, but I did it. It was very or very hard to dig the hole for the body. That feel of the rain pelting down on me, I don't think I'll ever forget it. The rain, the mud, and the sprays of blood. The sensations of floundering in a swamp. When I met Takano-san on the way home, that wasn't good no matter how I interpreted it. It was the most misfortune and uncalculated thing that had happened that night. Everything would have been perfect if only I hadn't encountered her. I was just riding my bike with my shovel in one hand through the downpour utterly soaked. There was no way someone could sur surmise I was a murderer burying a body just from that information. Now that I was thinking calmly and napping under the morning sun, that's what I thought. Still, the more I think about Takana-san's eyes... It seemed like she understood. Takana-san, she knew that I'd kill someone, buried them, and then I'd be on my way home exhausted. Takana-san wouldn't gain anything from selling me out to the police. But that didn't mean I could feel at ease. <laughs> I had crossed such a bridge to get my tranquil life back, and I'd finally achieved it as a result. But now, for the rest of my life, for all the tranquil days starting today, I'd have to live in fear of when they could suddenly end. I may have twisted my ankle, dulled from total exhaustion, the fact that I couldn't make the snap judgment I needed to. I regretted it the more and more as time went on. You didn't have a choice, Keiichi, my bar. You didn't have a choice at the time. You were tired. You were a mess. Even if you had made a decision, you might not have been able to kill her. 
she might have just beaten you instead. In that sense, parting ways and eventually could have been the safer option. No matter how sharp Takano-san's intuition was, she had no proof. Her suspecting me didn't amount to evidence by itself. Just worry about it when the time comes. Now isn't a time to be worrying. It's a time to be smiling, right? You accomplished so much just to gain a new life starting today, didn't you? Then you should be happy at this new morning. If remembering the past is too hard for you, then just consider everything up to yesterday as having never happened. You said so yourself. You'd buried it all like it never happened. Well, your wish came true. Everything before yesterday and never happened. So be happy, Keiichi Maibara. Bye. I stuck my hands lazily. It felt a little silly for me to be the one doing it. I heave a sigh from deep in my belly. And that sigh got my lungs moving. It felt like I hadn't been breathing until just now. It wasn't enough to admonish myself over. All the dice that could be thrown already had been. And the numbers that turned up weren't bad at all. If I lost those numbers, then I'd just have to give up, I guess. I grabbed the, my, the chest of my pajamas, the chest of my pajamas, and flapped it back and forth. Cool air flowed over my sweating body. Okay. Nothing before yesterday happened. Nothing. Nothing at all. I'd forget it all. Yesterday was all a dream. What time was it? About midday. Getting myself up and going to school this late seemed kind of absurd, but I needed to go. I felt like going to school would be the first step into my peaceful new life. I didn't care how late it was, I would go. I'd go to school right now and get back to the life I had retaken as soon as I could. My lazy body immediately became lighter at the thought. I rolled out, out of the futon, bounced onto my knees, then leaped upright. <laughs> I stuck out my chest with pride and my gymnast-like pose and then took a breath or took a breath of fresh air. The brisk morning air had been gone for a while, replaced by the crisp air of the summer. Downstairs, I got a stern talking by my mom, saying, where were you last night? When did you get back? You need to tell me when you won't be home for dinner, things like that. But considering the importance of what I accomplished yesterday, a little scolding was no problem. In fact, I felt like sort of the thing would happen in such a peaceful life. I listened with an irresponsible smile and stepped out into the sun high overhead. It was around the time lunch break would be ending. Everyone would be, or probably be worrying about me. I didn't go to the festival, and now I wasn't at school. Well, maybe they weren't too worried about it. Since they would have gotten a small piece of news, but a happy one from Satego today. Yes, the small piece of news that her uncle hadn't come home last night. Satego would probably live her days in nervous tension for a while, thinking he m might still come home. But eventually, those days would end. And finally, Satako too would realize her uncle was never coming back. And then Rika-chan would quietly invite her over. She would say, you can live with me again. And everything would be back to normal. Our lives would go back to how they were before that man appeared. Satako would start wearing that extraordinary smile complete with those protruding canines and fool everyone with those traps she was so proud of. I'd probably be her first target out of everyone, but I wouldn't be mad. In fact, I might actually shed tears of joy at the return of something so normal. Satoko, she'd gradually grow back into that meddlesome personality of hers. I mean, my lack of useful life skills was already completely exposed. I wondered if I'd ever be a match for Satoko. But that would be such a pleasant thing to see. 
and with such a warm fuzzy predictions, I didn't feel bad for going to school so late. In fact, I wanted to run there now to get there as soon as I could. Instead, I decided to savor those peacefulness of just going to school like normal without running. The world I'd obtained for myself that gave me joy just by walking like this. Yes! The world beginning on this very day was something I had won. Without that monumental feat yesterday, I would never have been able to come to school so cheerfully today. The school gate came into sight. Just then, I heard the principal ringing the bell to mark the end of lunch break. It was a clear, refreshing sound. I stopped this bite myself and let myself take it in. Tap. I had stopped suddenly. So, there was an extra footstep. Okay, it became eerie again. With a noise, the blessedness I was feeling throughout my whole body withdrew into any pore I could find. And as if to replace it, I felt like hundreds of hairy caterpillars were climbing up to my feet. I turned back, but of course nobody was there. A single footstep could easily bend my imagination. But the footstep felt so ominous. The extra footstep I heard after seeing Takana-san off last night. With everything that happened on that insane night, I didn't mind something like that happening once. It had been a hell of a night after all. In fact, having just one hallucination was pretty fortunate. But those footsteps should have ended with yesterday, so if I heard them again today, there was really only one thing it could have meant. Last night still wasn't over. So is he actually hearing footsteps? Like we we aren't hearing it in the I mean the game like like boom boom boom. There's nothing like that, right? Remember when Shion said she was hearing footsteps in chapter two as well? So Keiichi's being like that. I uh, it was still going. Still, that insane night forever. That step I heard. Just that one extra footstep was quietly. Quietly ridiculing the nonsensical notion that the world starting today was completely different from the one that ended yesterday. My classmates playing the schoolyard all vanished like the tide going out. When I approached the school, it felt like the warm fuzzy scene had ended and it didn't feel good. At the entrance, I took a quick look in everyone's shoe boxes. Satiko Hojo, she was here. Mion was here too, and Rena, of course. Even Rikachan was here. Tomitaka, Tomitakun and Okumarakun were here. In fact, I didn't see any missing classmates. If there were shoes missing, they would have to be my own. I took my shoes off and snuck them in, then took out some slippers. There wasn't a single pair left in the shoe boxes anymore. With that, they returned to the rightful state. But as I stepped up onto the wooden floor, I noticed there was just one pair of slippers left. Hmm, who's? Ojo, Satoshi. Wait, what? No, no, I didn't understand. Oh, okay, okay. Satoshi had never been to school since disappearing last year. Until now, we had committed the exact same act of violence, but I guess in the very end, it went differently. You couldn't make it to school, but here I am. I didn't repeat the same mistake you made. I wasn't about to let myself feel superior about that. In fact, I felt an odd sense of familiarity with him. A misfortune bond with someone I'd never met due to the following same fate. I headed down the hallway towards the usual classroom. It felt like it had been a whole year since coming here. Hey, did you forget Keiichi Maibara? Satoshi Hojo didn't really disappear in the night of the Watanagashi, did he? <sighs> Satoshi Hojo disappeared a few days later. On Satiko's birthday, if I was right. I didn't know what day it was. But I couldn't say for sure I avoided Satoshi's failure. Unless I remained here the past day. Or past that day. I was still living in the night of insanity. The teacher still hadn't come to the classroom. The other door clattered open, the one teacher wouldn't use, so 
Everyone turned at once to see who had arrived. Everyone looked pretty vacant. Hmm. Suppose I'll go greet them. <laughs> Silence. When I started to think I'd fallen flat, someone finally started laughing at me. Hearing me on and Rena's cheerful voices made me realize how dumb those dark feelings I'd been having at the entrance were really were. Oi, oi, Omatsuri Kibunte. At the festival at all, remember? Before I could say that, Rika-chan smiled at me. So they're covering for him. <laughs> Mion starts laughing at the memory as she slaps me a few times in the back. Tomite-kun was facing me and talking. There was nobody behind me. And then Manny was talking to me. <laughs> so for this one, they did the same as in chapter 1, right? They did the uh, shooting, I suppose. What do you call it again? Um, Tomita. Target practice, right? And then Tomita, or Tomita, Tomitake lost, and then I guess they did um, the writing on his, uh, uh, what do you call shirt. Ah, so there, the shirt. Crying at a time like that is a feat only for four a day would be allowed to, or only four a day. Oko said Okumura-kun, breathing heavily from his nose. In my direction, everyone laughed if anyone but Rika-chan had done it. It would have been against the rules. Rika-chan gave a one of her Nipa smiles as she listened to it. In my direction... Rena too turned to me, no, turns towards me. And then with a somewhat embarrassed smile, she whispered to me so only I could hear. Yeah, why are they thanking him though? Wait, what? I mean, she, this happened in the first chapter, right? He all, Keichi gave it to her. But yeah, Keichi was not there yesterday. Uh, the class laughed the cheering and jeering. Uh, this whole time, the conversation had been a little bit off. I wasn't quite getting it. Yeah, what is happening? Rena seemed taken aback, but when she answered, she did it with a smile. なかなか倒せないから額を狙ったり素早く何発も撃ったりしていろいろと試したんだよねそれでケイチ君鉄砲を何丁もあらかじめ用意して素早く撃って見せてくれたんだよねかっこよかったはあ<笑> 
Wait, who was this? あの後の飲み会でさ、町内会の会長連中にも、ケイちゃんの評判すごく良かったんだよ。ケイちゃんの売り工場に惚れたーって騒いでたのは、子供会の君吉徳蔵会長だったかな。次の祭りでは、ぜひケイちゃんに何店舗か任せたいって言ってた。徳蔵は、お祭りの実行委員会の模擬店部長さんなのです。Maybe my bar s a n is great at making things sound good, isn't he? Yep, whenever he talks about something, it seems a lot better than it actually is. Y- you can't say that. Wait, what? Okay. No, I'm, I'm kind of confused, yeah. I'm kind of confused with this conversation right now. What the hell? さっきから何の話だよ大体俺 Didn't go to the festival in the first place I swallowed those words I didn't know exactly why But in Hinomizawa This is what had happened Yeah, like everything they've been saying Happened in the first chapter Yesterday, during the Watanagashi festival, Keiichi Maibara had appeared and he had romped about with all the usual members of his club. He made a big scene, a few stalls, snatched a few sticks of takoyaki and okonomiyaki in his glee. <coughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, had to cough there. Reading each of them as delicious or terrible to get everyone excited. And they seen a gigantic stuffed animal at the target practice, and everyone went after it. So, for this one, they're not showing a very big bear, they're just showing a small one, I suppose, right? And then I got a whole bunch of cork guns, firing them in rapid succession, throwing each one after using it. And admirably, I shot down the biggest stuffed animal there. And then I gave it the stuffed animal. The proof of my victory to Ren as a gift. Then our fun came to a close as we had to go see Rika chan's o f f i t o r i dance. There w a s a ton of people squeezed in there and we all got separated, but we each managed to get into a good position to cheer Rika chan on from. Then in the middle, when c h i o n came up and asked me to go and hang out with her instead of watching the dedication dance. Uh, wait. I refused and stayed put watching the dance until the very end. So, first part is like chapter one, and then second part was like chapter two when s h i o n came to him, but this time he refused. But who? Who was that? Well, everyone's been saying it, haven't they? Keichi m a i b a r a I had an urge to yell in anger at my classmates for having so much fun talking about the festival yesterday with Keiichi Maibara. What the hell are you guys even talking about? Far stronger than that feeling, though, was the sheer uncanny nature of this reality I couldn't understand. A Keiichi Maibara who wasn't me was in Hinamizawa yesterday. As I threw away my humanity, I turned into a demon. And was busy beating Satako's uncle to death. I was having a great time at the festival last night. What the hell? I had to suffer through so much, desperately holding the, back the tears, getting so worn out in the downpour, digging holes, be, chasing, beating, and killing, dragging, and burying. Who was this Gechi m a i b a r a who had ignored me so and spent so much? Or such a fun, carefree time at the festival. Damn it. Who the hell stood in for me as I put my life on the line, working so hard to achieve this treasure like everyday life? If there was another cage in my bar besides me, then what was it? Or what was I? On the night of the Watanegashi, where one died and one disappeared, in accordance with Oyashiro Sama's curse, there was only a demon who had killed someone. 
Dumbfounded as I succumbed to a horrifying possibility, I looked around at my classmates. To make sure there was nobody extra I didn't recognize among them. To make sure I wasn't among them. It was a horrifying thought. The real Keiichi Maibara hadn't overslept and had come to school in time. And that I, who was no longer Keiichi Maibara, had just waltzed in here. But no matter how much I checked, the only people here were the ones I knew. The man I met every time I looked in the bathroom mirror was not here. Hi. Okay, man, this kundo was confusing. The teacher entered and everyone hurried back to their seats. Upon finding me who was stupidly late, she gave me a stern talking to but I wasn't listening to it. Wasn't our old life supposed to start today? Where's Satoko by the way? Isn't Satoko supposed to be here? Something wasn't right. It was just strange. I was supposed to go back to my old fun life yesterday. I had set foot in an incomparably mysterious world. That was completely different from both my old life and my recent one. Yes, this was without a doubt a different world than the one I'd been living in until now. There was no s way such an absurd thing could be possible. So now this is uh, how I put that. How do I put this? For me, for the killings and stuff like that, right? For the murders, disappearances. My theory for that is that is people do. That is uh, people are doing that, but for this kind of stuff. This is what I'm saying, like, there is, like, small, small supernatural stuff in this series. And maybe this is one of it? Because, yeah, you, you heard what they were saying, right? It was basically the ones that happened in Chapter 1 and in Chapter 2, right? And they're saying it here. It's weird. And confusing. But unless it was true, I couldn't explain anything that just happened. In this classroom, I was surrounded by so many faces I knew, and yet I felt isolated. The cicadas sounded no different than they had before now, but they seemed somehow false. The air was parched and dry too, making me think was the air in Hinamizawa always this uncomfortable? Oi, Lena. To be honest, I was pretty excited afterwards and I gobbled down some cans of beer. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but I don't quite remember some things. For random babbling, it wasn't a bad excuse. That marched. I called Mion and told her to take Satoko in my place since I wouldn't be able to meet up with him due to the things I had to do. みんなでお祭りの準備をしてた時に決めたんだよ。少しでもおじさんの姿の見えないところに連れ出してあげようと思って。That was the same too. Mian said that when I called her, that everyone had already decided to invite her. それでみんなでレナとミーちゃんとリカちゃんでサトコちゃんの家に行ってサトコちゃんを連れ出して。Okay. And that part didn't matter. What I was trying to ask was... だから。
At my sudden threatening demand, Reno was at a loss of words. Oops, I shouldn't have rushed that. I told her I was sorry. The shrine grounds. よっこりと。リカちゃんと話してたじゃない。うん。ミコさん姿のリカちゃんと楽しそうに話してた。それでレナも加わって、はうん、お持ち帰りって。リカちゃんと話してたのか。けいちゃん、用事か何かがあったん
If I had returned that early, I would have definitely run into my parents. Or at the very least, they wouldn't have asked me when I got back last night. So, the cage in my bar from yesterday, that meant he never went home. Then men, the downpour happened, the festival was broken up, everyone left. But he didn't go back to the house. That means... When I arrived at the natural conclusion, a wicked chill suddenly froze my spine and climbed up to my brain. That meant Keiichi Maibara was the same as Satoshi. One day, he never went home. On the night of the Watanagashi, he never went home. The downpour interrupted at the festival, and then the way home, he suddenly disappeared. And I, who was dealing with the corpse, went home without a problem. I was so tired, I wasn't even hungry, so I went up to my room without a sound and curled up my futon. Who was I? That much was obvious. Keiichi Maibara. Keiichi Maibara was me. There may have been another one, but that doesn't negate the fact that I was Keiichi Maibara. Then the other Keiichi Maibara was what? The voices of the cicadas suddenly filling the classroom were beginning to bother me. Suddenly, I laid eyes on Satiko. There she is again. <laughs> Dead expression. Satiko's expression was dark as always. She seemed completely exhausted at a life of agony. She couldn't even imagine an ending to. What had last night been like for Satiko? Did you have fun with everyone and feel a little happier, if even for a moment? And when she went home... The end of her dream, she'd probably gone to sleep afraid of when her uncle would return. And then this morning, her uncle hadn't come home. And then she went to school. Right now, she must have been still trapped by the rotten idea which she couldn't be saved, that her uncle would need her when she got back. But he can rest easy, it's easy, Satiko. Your uncle won't ever be coming back. I couldn't tell her it was because I'd kill him. When Satiko realized on her own that her uncle would never return, then that would be the end of a long and sad night. That's right. I didn't do anything wrong. I did the best possible thing I could have as Satego's Nini. Not an atom in my body regretted it. And look. Calm down and think, my Bara. From a certain point of view, isn't it convenient there was another my Bara? I buried the corpse perfectly. A beginning wouldn't happen, but if worse or came to worse, and it got out and the investigation got to me, I now had a strong alibi able to profess the fact that I had been in the Watanagashi festival. But accepting something so creepy and using it as an alibi? Still, if I proved that she hadn't gone to the festival, or I, I hadn't gone to the festival yesterday, it would do no good and a whole lot of harm. That was what was left, the really actual bad aftertaste. You'll forget about it, Keiichi Maibara. Everything had happened before today. So just forget about Keiichi Maibara who was there yesterday too. Hmm. Instead, let's watch gently over Satoko for the day her smile returns. And the day that would mark the end of that insane all too long night. So, this is the
起立気をつけレッ !Goodbye. I thought about many things and saw my thoughts dispersed by many other things. I didn't know whether or not time had been spent worrying or daydreaming, but either way, it came to an end along with the class. Cheerfully, our classmates got their things and ran for the hallway. Mion, Arena, and Rika chan were packing up as well. What about Satoko? This whole day, she seemed deflated. Well, her uncle may not have returned last night, but she wouldn't have known he'd never return. How much I wanted to express that factor. Sadako packed up her pencil box and Matt workbook messily, and after a dark glance at the clock, heaved a sigh. Then went to the, leave the classroom. And then suddenly somebody placed a hand on her shoulder and stopped her. Her words, possessed by persecution complex, hurt. I spoke loudly so everyone could hear. Sadako always had to tend to her uncle, so club has been on hiatus. In her minds, our club was proof of a calm, peaceful life. By enjoying being together, I wanted to make Sadako realize her days of darkness were over. Under a condition that was important, with everything up to her, Satoko gave a worried look. My uncle might be or might already be home. The spoke her darkened eyes, her mouth unmoving. さとこもさ、連日息が詰まるような生活をずっと続けててさ、もう窒息寸前だろ。そんなのは心にも体にも悪いだけだぜ。やっぱりたまにはパッと弾けなきゃな。放っておいてくださいまし。私だってそれは部
私たちも引き止めたんだよ今日はおじさん公認だからちゃんと遊んでも怒られないんだよって。At some point, tears had begun welling up in Satiko's eyes. Satiko was afraid of her uncle、so、that she couldn't even allow herself time with friends and went home. No, she wasn't even afraid of letting herself have a good time with her friends. Keiichi-san was good, right? We all had a good time with each other. If you ask, I was a good time with each other. I was a good time with each other. Smiling to herself, her tears began to fall. Sato. でも今の私そんなのそんなの Unable to withstand such violent emotion, a few teardrops slid down her, her cheek. But even though she was having such a terrible time, not once did she ever say that it was hard for her. It was sad, obstinate bravery. But the days when Satiko had to feel like that were over. Satiko didn't need to endure it to bear it anymore. She could forget all about it now and smile. I was so frustrated at not being able to tell her that directly. Instead, I said something that I'm not sure I should have said before. I thought, I thought twice about it. The words were deeply meaningful to me, but I didn't know if Satiko understood them. Sadako shouted with all her might. I killed him. Killed him yesterday. Killed him for sure. And I buried him. Buried him whole. We could never return to his house. What? Our stories weren't matching up. I do. Rikachan went over to Satiko and said a few words of consolation. But Satiko angrily refused those words and thrust Rikachan away. Nini. Nini. 
てきてよクライングサテコ slowly walked out into the hallway After a moment, Rika chan went after her. I couldn't stop thinking about the words Sadako had spoken while crying. I buried her uncle last night. But she said this morning. That was impossible. I buried him last night, so she couldn't have seen her uncle this morning. What was. What was Sadako? At that point, I heard Mion's cold voice. Ne, Kei-chan. Satoko no oji-san ga kaette konai te. Nani? I mean, was it, isn't it obvious? I mean, <laughs> wasn't he, wasn't he, I'll call this, didn't he call you the other day and then ask you to eliminate him? <laughs> I said too much. I let my emotions get the better of me. Rena mo kiita yo. さとこちゃんのおじさんが帰ってこないって言った。どうしてなんで帰ってこないのおかしいよね。だって今朝もちゃんとさとこちゃんのおじさんはいるんだよ。なのになんで帰ってこないなんて言うのかなこの。Suddenly, Mion and Rena started to speak in a strange and creepy voices. What were they doing? What were they saying? Kei-chan wa Satoko no oji-san ga iru to nani ka tsugou ga warui koto demo aru wake? Omae ra koso nani o itteru nda? Look at their eyes, though. Yeah. <laughs> something, something wasn't right. The next thing I knew, Mion and Rena were smiling thinly and their eyes were dark and muddy in a way that I'd never seen before. And as our eyes met, the mud even seemed to fill the air. Satoko's恥は確かに嫌なやつだよね。私もいなくなった方がいいやつだと思うよ。でもさ、いるわけだし、仕方ないじゃない。Nothing we can do. Something is wrong. Something's clearly wrong here. What the hell is happening? After a moment, a chilly, liquid-like feeling as though my blood had been mixed with sherbet crawled up my spine. Uh, Ren was trying to prompt me to say some, to say more. That really was no choice, so I killed him. I killed him to protect Satoko. それは放っておきなよ。そのうち解決しちゃうと思うしさ。さとこちゃんが。おじさんがいるって言ってるんだからいる。ちゃんと昨日もいたし、今朝もいる。オッケー。そうならそうでいいんじゃないかな。かな。Mion okay. and Rena were speaking unbelievably dismissively. How could they be talking like that? Mion and Rena, they were my friends and were seriously worried about Sadako's abuse, weren't they? They would never blurt out something like this. And I definitely killed Sadako's uncle. No matter what Sadako or anyone else say, I wouldn't acknowledge it because him being alive was impossible. There is no way he was alive. It was impossible. And yet since Sadako herself said he was here, then he was alive. 
I didn't know why or how, but suddenly Mion and Rena were at my side, standing there silently. Okay. If words could freeze blood, then there was no doubt that they would have frozen me solid or frozen me solid. I could hear it, a strange sound like a layer of thin ice spreading emanating from every joint in my body. And with them close at my sides, left the school as, as if they were police officers taking me away. They talked about silly things the entire way home like they always did. But they always stood at my sides as if to prevent me from escaping. This was strange. Everything about this day was strange. It actually had been strange ever since the previous night. Yes, thinking back, it had been strange ever since killing Satoko's uncle. That creepy meeting with Takano-san was only the beginning. That insane night was still continuing. Yet, yes, it still hadn't ended. What? When I stopped, it was a distant, but I definitely heard them. And extra footsteps. Now he's hearing more footsteps again, but we can't hear it though. That was proof. Proof that insane and that insane night had an ending. Me and left where she usually did, and finally we came to my house. What was it? She was inviting me along on oh, one of her oversized garbage treasure hunts at the dam side, right? But why now? Me and coming along was strange too. Mian may have accepted Rena's little hobby, but she hated fishing through garbage so she'd never come with her before. And the location, specifically being the dam site, was a little creepy. The dam's construction site was completely outside the flow of everyday life. It was so remote that no one ever wanted there, or never, no one ever went there unless they thought to in particular. Nobody lived there and there were no lights, so at night it got dark very quickly. I was being forcibly invited there. There was no reason I had to fear Rena and Mion. Besides, wouldn't the trouble I'd make by refusing them to be a pain to, d to deal with? In that way, it didn't seem like going treasure hunting with them was a bad idea. But that insane night was continuing. Having the sirens of instinct been wailing in my mind for a while now? Warning me that Rena and Mion were strange, that I needed to be cautious. That warning sirens are so freaking loud, it felt like my head would split in two. Ah, Lena. I actually have a What? Rena was smiling, but her words made her discomfort clear. You're lying, aren't you? You just made that up now, you liar. That's what Rena's eyes said to me. Uh, no. Ore. Atamaga itainda. Kazekamo shenai. Dagara, bioinite. Xurio morate kitainda. Hontoni? God damn. That wasn't really a lie. My head did hurt a little bit, so I wasn't lying. Rena, she couldn't figure out if my head hurt or not just by looking at it. Nara, 
After staring me in the eyes for a few moments, she fired a sharp needle like stare at me. <laughs> needle? Remember the needle? The tension in my body loosened and I felt like my knees might buckle. It seemed like Rena had realized that I was going to refuse her invitation for a while now. With how serious she looks, she might actually call the clinic later to make sure I went. I couldn't say anything careless. Lying about getting checked out was just an excuse to decline her request in the first place. It didn't matter whether I actually went. Ah, He's gonna, he's gonna bring his receipt to her so she believes him. Another tingle started crawling up my back. There was no ignoring it. Rena and Mion must have been monitoring my movements. That wasn't normal. Far from it. All of it was insane. I did what I did because I wanted my peaceful life back. But when, what on earth was all of this? It was far from peaceful. Something had gone mad, leaving the world out of order. With the other cage in my bar. With those creepy footsteps I've been hearing. With Rena and Mion acting so curious. And above all, with him being alive. Where was I? In Hinamizawa village, Shishibone. I knew that much. Was this really the Hinamizawa I knew? Oi, my barakechi. Koko wa doko nan da? I ask whipping around before the front door to face the one who has been following in my wake all day. Nobody would have been there, of course. <sighs> Keichi my bar, uh huh? That's what I just call him. Call the one who had been trailing behind me this whole time. That shadowy presence always clinging to me. Like it was constantly watching for the opportunity to change places. Footsteps always following me was another impossibility. It couldn't have been a ghost, so it was just impossible. So the strangeness must have been my ears, my head, or Hinamizawa itself. Everything I could see was the same exact Hinamizawa I knew so well, and that gave me the creeps. Eventually, I decided to actually go to the clinic. I really didn't want to go outside, but a stronger feeling than that desire was the fear that Rena might actually be keeping an eye on me, so if I went to see the hospital... But before I went to the clinic, there was something I wanted to make sure of. It was at school. I pretended I'd forgotten something and was going back to the classroom to pick it up. Is he gonna check the bat? As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I was overwhelmed by paranoia. I was just going to the classroom, but I hated it so much, having to be so careful to fake it. After carefully verifying once more that nobody was watching, I went over to the locker. Yes, Satoshi's locker. I committed the crime with the bat I found in the locker, in this locker, Satoshi's bat. And then I had thrown the bat into the swamp. Which meant the bat shouldn't have been inside. Okay, moment of truth. But what if the bat was still in here? It was a very dreadful, incomprehensible idea, but if it was true, it would explain a lot. If the bat was in here, yesterday's events would have all been a delusion, no, an illusion. I hadn't killed anyone and had gone to the festival. I had a great time rampaging about it with everyone. It would prove that Keiichi Maibara was really me. 
proof that I was only under some strange assumption that I had believed or had killed Satago's uncle. Proof that it had been all been a wild fantasy that would explain everything. Nothing happened yesterday. I had just gone mad, unable to separate my shocking uncle killing dream from reality. That would explain everything. Just open the locker, sir. I want to see now. Stop talking. If the bat was here, would I, able be, would I be able to accept that reality? If it was here, nothing will have changed. If it was here, it would mean I'd just gone crazy. Preparing myself for the worst, I opened the locker. I was actually scared of opening it slowly, so I tried to open with a bang. <laughs> And just like the first time, the choking scent of smell and sweat, like a stale towel, came flowing out. There was a baseball uniform and some miscellaneous other things like notebooks. There was also a shoe patch. And as for the bat, just say it, man. It wasn't there, okay? It was how I left it when I took the bat out. Okay, so it's not there, so it definitely did happen, but... Okay. There was no doubt yesterday really happened. Now that I knew I wasn't a lunatic. You you aren't a lunatic. That you killed someone, you are a lunatic. But at the same time, if I wasn't the crazy one, and then Hinamizawa was, and that was evidence of reality I found as a difficult to accept. There was noise somehow creeping into everything I saw and the world was losing a tiny bit of color. So uh, what did I know about last night now? Now that I made sure the bat was, wasn't there, I didn't need to be here anymore. Shall I go? For real to the hospital? It was my first time going to the hospital, but from what I heard, it wasn't far from school. My mom had told me where it is or where it was. A big easy to see road went straight here. I went past a shopping street, made a turn. It wasn't overly hard to spot the sign with the Eerie Clinic written on it. Okay, so yeah, let's take a break here. A lot of stuff been happening, man. Seriously, a lot, a lot of stuff's been happening in this episode alone. So, if there, if the bat wasn't there, right? Or no, or rather, or rather the opposite. I mean, if the bat was there, then I would have believed. I mean, I kind of believe still that. Maybe there's some supernatural to it because you can't really explain. It's really hard to explain the other one, them seeing Keiichi at the festival, right? But yeah, the bat was, wasn't was there, so what Keiichi did uh, yesterday really did happen, right? He ended Satoshi's, or Satoshi, Satoko, yeah, Sat Satoshi, <laughs> Satoko Satoshi's uncle, right? He did that for sure. The hard one to say is this one, the, the Keiichi my bar that they saw on the festival it is hard to explain that because even tomi not tomitake what's his name again the other kid okumura and i forgot the name of the other kid man he just sounds a little bit same to tomitake but yeah the, him and the other kid also know that keichi was there right and then yeah the dance with rika i guess they said he was there as well it could be how do i put this like maybe Keichi, or Keichi, Mion, because remember when Keichi called Mion, right, and told him, or and told Mion that, oh, hey, Mion, if you could choose someone uh, to be gone in the Watsanagashi, right, uh, please make it Sat Sat uh, Satako's uncle, right? She probably knew that what Keichi was, what Keichi was gonna do, right, that it was super obvious, him going, right, but... Maybe they were covering for him, but the problem is a lot of them saw Keiichi there, right? So, I guess that is... Uh, that can't be possible, I mean, what I'm saying here. That maybe just Mion and Reno were covering for him. If only if only those two were the ones who saw him, maybe you could say that, right? But no, it was a lot of them. For Satoko? She said her uncle was still there, right? The thing is, maybe she could have just thinked it. Yeah, because Satoko's mind is pretty messed up right now, right? You could also you could see it from her eyes, right? But I don't know. Hard to explain 
maybe maybe she is just imagining him there because she's been doing all of that right she's so scared of him and then even though he was he's gone she's imagining him there but yeah, if we didn't have this other Keichimaibara, I could say my theory is, yeah, maybe Satoko's just, uh, just thinking about this and stuff. But I don't know anymore. It's very hard to explain. I want to know what, what was the answer in this one. What is, what is really happening behind this stuff now? Right? Maybe we're not going to find it out here for sure, but... It's hard to give ideas for this. Give ideas, give theories for this. Because how how many questions? Like, why was Keiichi there in the festival when he was killing Sepe Hojo? Why? Yeah, in this, cha in this episode alone, there were a lot of questions. Why is Sepe Hojo back, right? Why did Satoko say she saw him, right? And then... Yeah, thank, thank God the bat there. Kind of, what do you call this? Uh, said that, oh yeah, it actually did happen, right? Confirmed that it did happen. But what is this other things happening? Why are they saying all of these things? Why is Keiichi's friend saying all of this? It doesn't line up. The math ain't mathing, right? <laughs> but yeah, I guess we will have to see. But yes, we will go to the clinic tomorrow or in the next episode and... Let's see what happens with Keiichi. So we're going to continue this and do more of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 3, Tatsara Garoshi, in the next one. So I'll just see you then, guys. Bye-bye.